Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield. She and I am coming to you live from Warren Field in Brookline, Massachusetts, here to bring you live coverage of today's high school varsity baseball contest between the visiting Falcons of the Cambridge Ringe and Latin School and the hosting Brookline High Warriors. This is the last of Brookline's three games over the spring break week. They've taken care of business in the first two. Got a 5-4 victory against Boston Latin School on Monday on Patriots Day. Then a 6-0 win against Sharon yesterday. And now they are back here at Warren for one last morning game before they switch back to uh, more regularly timed contests next week. Today's contest pits two teams that have played each other very close in the past years. These two teams, each of the last two times they faced off, it went down to a walk-off. Brookline got the walk-off victory in, I want to say, the eighth inning, maybe the bottom of the seventh, two years ago on a walk-off single by then-sophomore, now-senior captain Keenan Sawada. And then last year, in a game that was played in Cambridge, they played a game that went a number of extra innings. Um, uh, it was a very long game in the regular season finale. And Cambridge ultimately won on a walk-off E9 that was hit by, uh, I believe, Stefan Alexandrov as a pinch hitter. That win, of course... Uh, I believe kept Cambridge, uh, Cambridge's playoff hopes alive at the time. I think they still had one game left to play after that, but uh, Brookline had been long out of the playoffs by that point and ended that season last year with uh, with the tough extra inning loss. So two teams that always put on a show when they face each other off, so... We'll see what kind of a show they have for us here in this year in 2024. Brookline coming into this one with all the momentum in the world. In the midst of a six-game win streak, they now hold a 7-1 and one record. Now, this is, this is my fourth year covering this team. We're not even halfway through the season, and already Brookline has more wins this season than they've gotten in any of the regular seasons I've covered for them the past three years. All right, we will soon be getting this one underway here at Warren Field. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, and you are watching Brookline High Baseball. and he laces it out to right. Harrison Siegel delivers. 
Connor taking off for second. It's a low skipping throw. Melton throws down, and they got him in time. Hits it, he wins it! Hugh Bollinger, welcome to the Warriors! Brookline wins! All right. Brookline getting ready to take the field in the top of the first. Let's run through the lineups really quick before we get this one started. We'll start with the visitors, the Cambridge Ringe and Latin Falcons. Leading off for Cambridge and starting on the mound, number 15, Jason Thomas. Batting second, the right fielder, number 18, Oliver Henke. Batting third, the shortstop, number two, Jaden Ballou. Batting cleanup, the left fielder, number 10, Che Santos. Batting fifth, the catcher, number five, Joel Rojas Cruz. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number one, Kosi Milner. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number 12, Stefan Alexandrov. Batting eighth, the first baseman, number three, Pat Brennan. And batting ninth, the center fielder, number eight, Henry Carter. Head coach of the Cambridge Ringe and Latin baseball team is Robert Merrill. And then the starting lineup for Brookline as they get ready to take the field here in the top of the first inning. Leading off for Brookline today, the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. Batting second, the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. Batting third, the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Batting cleanup, the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. Batting fifth, the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger. Batting seventh, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. Batting eighth, the designated hitter, number 23, Jonathan Mazzara. Batting ninth, the left fielder, number 11, Nico Hart. And just playing the field for Brookline and starting on the mound for the Warriors, number 15, Owen Hoffman. Head coach of the Brookline High baseball team is Brendan O'Connor. So those are our starting lineups for today. Of note, uh, Owen Hoffman making his third pitching start of the season. All three of his starting appearances on the mound have been on uh, less than ideal days weather-wise. It rained when he started uh, against Waltham. It rained when he started against Dover Sherborne. And it rained, uh, it was drizzling earlier today. I'm, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping that's it for the day, but I don't trust these overcast New England skies as far as I can throw them. And I can't throw the sky very far, so uh, yeah, I don't trust it. Um, so we'll see how the weather holds up for us today as we get ready to start this one off. So as the Warriors take the field for their warm-ups here in the top of the first inning, let's look at the stats for the starting pitcher today. Owen Hoffman, before this game, he has appeared uh, in three, he's pitched in three games, started two of them, has a one and one win loss record, has pitched 11 and a third innings through his first three contests with an ERA of 1.85, a whip of 1.15, and 10 strikeouts. So far, this pitching season for Hoffman has had more ups than downs. But it definitely started on a downward note. Uh, he started Brookline's only loss of the season so far in what ended up being a mercy rule 10 nothing loss to Waltham. He gave up five runs through, I think, about three innings pitched. Three of those five runs were earned. It was a tough outing for Hoffman, and it was a tough outing for Brookline. 
Since then, he's had much more favorable results, had two shutout innings of relief against uh, Natick, and got the win on the mound that time, and then he lasted six and a third against Dover Sherborne. Uh, ended up giving up uh, two runs, uh, one run early in that game, and then one uh, inherited runner that he left for a reliever uh, in the seventh inning that came in to score. And then, of course, uh, Brookline surrendered its lead in the seventh inning of that game, so Hoffman left that game with a no decision. So we'll see how this one shakes out. Warriors versus Falcons. Here we go. We got our first note in the live chat today from Yuli Burstein, a very simple let's go Brookline. Happy to see you tuning in, Yuli. I hope you enjoy the game. And if anyone else, uh, whether they be a fan of Brookline or of Cambridge, wants to say anything in the live chat, I encourage you to do so. And so we're going to start things off with an immediate pitcher versus pitcher matchup. As leading off for the Falcons is their pitcher, also wearing number 15, Jason Thomas. First pitch, he hits a grounder over to short, fielded off the dirt by Hom, thrown to first, and that is out number one. Felix Hom made that one look pretty routine for a one pitch out, but be wary that we are playing in some wet conditions out here at Warren Field from the earlier uh, rain, so it'll be interesting to see how the wet conditions impact plays in the field as we go. Now batting for Cambridge, the right fielder, number 18, Oliver Henke. That one is in the dirt for ball one. This one is going to be chopped foul up the first base side for strike two. And again, Hanky out in front of that one, but he stays alive at one and two. So Hanky has seen a couple of off-speed pitches and come out ahead of him. You wonder if Hoffman might mix in a fastball. He did, but it sailed high. And that'll be two and two. And this one is lifted into left field. Nico Hart under it for out number two. Two down here in the top of the first, now batting the shortstop, number two, Jaden Ballou. Slice the first pitch, going to stay in the infield. It's being tracked and caught by Bollinger for out number three. So two one-pitch outs in a very efficient first inning for Owen Hoffman as the Falcons go down in order. We move to the bottom of the first now as Jason Thomas, who led off the top of the first for Cambridge, will now be in the driver's seat on the mound in the bottom half. For Brookline, their 
Three hitters at the top of the order, Sawada, Siegel, and Brendel will be due up. We got another note from a familiar name in the live chat from Brookline relief pitcher Sasho Esch. Go Brookline from D.C. I'm on vacation right now, but I'll be back on the mound soon. Well, Sasho, I know the Warriors would love to have you in the dugout with them, but I'm sure they're happy that you're able to tune in and support them from our nation's capital. And I hope you're having a nice vacation. Right, the Falcons finish their warm-ups. Now up for Brookline, the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. First pitch, and Sawada lifts it into shallow right. That's going to drop in for a leadoff base hit. So Sawada gets Brookline off to a nice start with a first pitch hit. We're seeing a lot of first pitch swings early in this one. Now batting for Brookline, the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. First pitch, he slices it foul, strike one. Siegel has been off to a monstrous start for Brookline. Leads the team in batting average, 429, on-base percentage, 625, slugging percentage, 476, hit by pitches, 6, steals, 9, and tied for the team lead in runs with 8 as he grounds to third, and the throw gets away. And so everyone is going to reach on what would have been a fielder's choice, but instead is going to be an E5. Brookline starting to put something together here. Runners at first and second. Now up the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. First pitch, he hits a dribbler foul up the first baseline. Brendel has also had a pretty explosive start to his season. And you can see his stats at the bottom of your screen. Batting average 300, on-base percentage 548, slugging percentage 400. He's tied for the team lead in doubles and walks and runs scored and holds. Sole ownership of the team lead in RBI with seven as he hits a grounder here over to second. And it's juggled by the second baseman. And so another infield error gives Brookline a bases loaded, no outs opportunity. Like I said, these are tough conditions to play in if you're an infielder due to uh, the rain that came earlier today. So when you see an infielder make a play on a grounder throughout this game, appreciate that those aren't gimmies. You know, there really aren't gimmies at the high school level to begin with, and especially not in less than ideal conditions like this. That pitch gets away, and so what a thought about it. But it was well chased down by Joel Rojas Cruz to hold the runners. So instead it'll be ball one. 
at the plate for Brookline is the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. That one's going to miss as well. Ball two. Thomas has got to be careful. A free pass here would bring in a run. Brookline has had, I believe, three separate bases loaded walks this season. But that one catches the inside corner. Strike one. Hom's bat has gone a little cold the past few games, but he has had so, uh, plenty of timely hits earlier in the season, which is how he's got five RBI. As that one is low for ball three. And he's got a chance to, uh, a real chance to add to his RBI count here. One more ball, and he will get a bases loaded walk. But he hits it, and it's through the right gap. One run comes in. Siegel racing around third, charging to the plate. He is in safe. Make it two more RBI to Felix Homs count as he puts Brookline on the board two to nothing. The speed of Harrison Siegel again pays dividends for Brookline as he makes it two runs in off the single through the right gap by Felix Hom. And now batting with runners at the corners and still no one out and a 2 nothing lead. The catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton sliced that one foul, strike one. Melton now ranks third on the team in RBI with six as Felix Hom just jumped up to tie for the team lead with seven RBI after driving in Sawada and Siegel. He's now taking off for second. That one catches the low corner, and they're not even going to contest that steal with a runner at third and Hom getting a very good jump there. So it's a one and two count to Melton with runners at second and third, slices it foul and stays alive at one and two. So Melton, as you can see from his stats on the bottom of your screen, he's been off to a good start at the plate as well this season. He's got an opportunity to drive in one or two here. Hits a grounder over to third, fielded by the third baseman, thrown to first there in time for the first out of the inning, but that will bring in Brendel on the RBI ground out. So 3 nothing Brookline and a runner at third with one out now as up comes the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger. First pitch well blocked by Rojas Cruz to prevent a wild pitch. That'll simply be ball one. So it's now a three-way tie for Brookline's team lead in RBI <coughs> as Melton now has seven RBI on the season, same as Hom and Brendel. That one hits the zone, strike one to Bollinger. Bollinger has had a pretty strong start to his freshman campaign, batting 6 for 17 with two steals, four runs scored, and three RBI. And make it four RBI as he drives that one up the middle. In comes Hom. Brookline keeps the rally going with their fourth run of the first inning. Now batting the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. First pitch in there, strike one. Rosenblatt's kind of platooned at first base with Brendel and Hom as he fouls that one off for strike two. So a limited number of plate appearances so far this season, but has been doing a pretty good job of getting on base. Two for seven with three walks and one run scored, so an on-base percentage of 500. As that one in the dirt 
Well blocked, ball one. Joel Rojas Cruz, got to give him some credit for handling uh, some off-the-mark pitches pretty well to prevent Brookline's runners from moving even further. As that one, I think, was just low for ball two. And Rosenblatt fouls that one out of play, stays alive at 2-2. Two and two. And that one does get away, and Bollinger will take second on the wild pitch, and it will now be a full count to Rosenblatt. And he fouls it off again out of play. And the count will stay full. That one hits the zone and Rosenblatt goes down on strikes. Thomas comes through on the payoff pitch. And now with two down and a runner at second, up comes the designated hitter, number 23, Jonathan Mazzara. First pitch hits the zone, strike one. Mazzara has also been uh, more of a platoon player for Brookline in and out of the batting order, but he's had a pretty explosive season of his own, tied for the team lead in doubles with two. As that one curves in nicely from Thomas for strike two. Mazzara three for ten with one hit by pitch, one steal, three runs, and three RBI. Staring down an 0-2 count with a runner at second and two down in the bottom of the first. And they say he went around and he gets tagged by Rojas Cruz. And that will end the first inning. Brookline shooting out of the gate to start this one. An efficient 1-2-3 inning in the top half, and then a four-run rally in the bottom half of the first. And through one, our score, the Brookline Warriors 4, the Cambridge Ringe and Latin Falcons 0. And we got a note... Uh, in the live chat from Greg Hoffman, let's go Brookline, like that efficient inning. I assume, uh, I assume, of course, that uh, he is referring to his son on the mound, Owen Hoffman, who had a very efficient first inning on the mound, had two one-pitch outs as he put the Cambridge hitters down in order. But Brookline was uh, working pretty efficiently in the bottom half of that inning as well quickly jumping on the board, although important to note uh, that some of those runs are uh, possibly all of those runs are going to go down as unearned for Thomas because of the two infield errors. Because remember, initially it looked like Harrison Siegel had grounded into a fielder's choice at second. But the throw from the third baseman sailed into the outfield. And then Brendel looked like he had grounded out to second. But that ball was juggled as well. And that allowed Brookline to load the bases for three straight RBI plays. A two-run single by Felix Hom, An RBI ground out to third by Avery Melton. And then an RBI single through the right gap by Hugh Bollinger.
That's got us at our 4-0 score right now. Now leading off for the Falcons, the left fielder, number 10, Che, Sanchos, uh, che Santos. Oh, my goodness. Apologies for that. Swing and a miss for strike one. And this one is lifted into shallow left. Hom back to get it, but charging in is Harrison Siegel. So that one hung in the air just a little too long. There are about three guys in the area of that one, but center fielder has authority when calling for a fly ball over everybody. Shortstop has authority over all infielders. Center fielder has authority over everybody. That one comes in over the head of the catcher, number five, Joel Rojas Cruz, for ball one. We saw Rojas Cruz did a nice job for the most part covering, uh, uh, preventing pitches from getting past him. One did get past him, but it didn't prove costly as he chased that one low for strike one. Hoffman not bringing a tremendous amount of speed, but working that off speed and working the pitch movement very well today to start as that one skips in the dirt for ball one, or ball two. I can count, I swear. This one lifted out to left center. Diving catch is made by Harrison Siegel. My goodness. I want to see that one again. Let's see if we can get that replay quickly enough. So that one lifted out. He just laid out for that one, just barely made that catch as I believe that first pitch was a ball to the second baseman, number one, Kosi Milner. Hits a liner that skips past the third baseman. It's in fair territory, going way down the left field line. This will be a two-out double for Milner. First hit of the day for the Falcons, and it's an extra base hit. So now two down with a runner in scoring position. And up comes the hero of last year's game between the Warriors and Falcons, the third baseman, number 12, Stefan Alexandrov. And a pickoff move, but Milner gets back safely. Of course, important to note that a pickoff is how yesterday's game ended as Charlie Engelman got a pickoff at second to finish his complete game shutout as that pitch comes inside for ball one to Alexandrov. This one lifted out to left, and that's going to drop in fair territory. That's going to bring in first run of the day for the Falcons. It's thrown in to second base to hold Alexandrov at first. But he gets the Falcons on the board with an RBI single to left. Falcons showing they are not going to go down without a fight. As now coming up the third, the first baseman, number one, Pat Brennan. Still two down in the inning, now with a runner on first and a run on the board. That one bounces but is blocked by Melton. Simply be ball one. And 
and chases that one high, strike two. And that one's going to miss high for ball two. Two and two, the count to Brennan. Alexandrov taking off, swing and a miss for strike three, and that ends the inning. But the Falcons do get on the board. And so the Brookline offense will go back to work, hoping to extend their lead. It'll be the 9-1-2 hitters for Brookline, Hart, Sawada, and Siegel. As the Falcons showing us there is still plenty of baseball left here. All right, here we go for the bottom of the second. Jason Thomas back out there for his second inning of work. After a rough first inning, saw four runs come across for Brookline. Leading off for the Warriors here in the second, the left fielder, number 11, Nico Hart. That one comes in low, ball one. Hart's had limited action at the plate so far this season. Currently batting one for six with one RBI. That one comes in high for ball two. That one hits the zone for strike one. And that one skips in low, ball three. So an early hitter's count to Nico Hart at three and one. And he fouls that one off a little behind that pitch and it will be a full count. Makes contact, taking off one hop by Brennan, and he's going to take it first himself <coughs> for the first out of the inning. Now we cycle back to the top of the order with the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. Last inning, Sawada led off with a single to uh, single to right and later came in to score on the two runs single by Felix Hom. Takes strike one to start. Ooh, that one hit him. Keenan Sawada gets hit by a pitch. 
even though that's usually the signature move of the man who's coming up after him. As now with a runner on first and one out, up comes the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. First pitch high, ball one. Siegel, his last time up, hit into what would have been a fielder's choice at second, but instead everybody reached on an E5, and he later came in to score with Sawada on Hom's two-run single. That one high for ball two. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Brookline sends Sawada to try and take second. He is one of their faster base runners. Siegel currently staring down a 2-0 count. And he is taking off. Great jump as Siegel swung and missed and Rojas Cruz dropped the ball. No, they say Siegel got a piece of it. And so Sawada has to go back to first. That is tough. Sawada got a fantastic jump on that steal. And Siegel rips this one up the middle. And that'll be a clean single, putting runners at first and second. Boy, just for your what ifs, if Siegel had managed to miss that pitch before that entirely, and it had just been a swinging strike one, and Sawada had been allowed to steal second, that single probably would have brought him in for another run. But instead, first and second, with one out, and now batting the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Prendel, his last time up, he reached on an E4 and later came in to score on the RBI ground out by Avery Melton. Now staring down a 2-0 count. That one is low for ball three. Brendel is tied for the team lead in walks with Melton at nine so far this season. Now one ball away from another free pass, and that is exactly what happens. A four-pitch walk, and that is the team leading 10th base on balls for Elias Brendel. And now coming up is the man who got the scoring started last inning, the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. First pitch, high and in, ball one. That one catches the outside corner, strike one. Tom got a two-run single to right his last time up, driving in Sawada and Siegel. He's got a chance to drive them both in again here if he can get another hit. That one miss is low and in, ball two. That one's going to get away, and Sawada not hesitating, dives for home, and he's in. A wild pitch brings home Keenan Sawada for Brookline's fifth run. A 3-1 count now to Hom with runners at second and third now. And that one's going to miss for ball four. So Hom takes a free trip down to first. Now batting the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton got an RBI, ground out to third his last time up, 
as he takes strike one there. Bases loaded with one out. Player is going to have to run hard on anything on the ground as that one skips in for ball one. As with one out in the inning, obviously a double play could potentially end the inning, although it might be harder to pull off with all infielders pulled in on the grass as Melton lifts one out to right field. That is going to drop in. Or no, it was caught. And tagging up and scoring was Siegel. So it's a sack fly, actually. I thought there was no way the right fielder was going to catch that, but I was proven very wrong. Brookline still brings in on a run on the sack fly for Avery Melton. Nice catch out in right field by Oliver Henke. Now batting the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger. 6-1, the lead now for Brookline. Two down, runners at first and second. Brendel taking off, both taking off. Bollinger hits a shallow one, and it's going to be caught at second for out number three. We are through two here at Warren Field. Our score at the end of two, Brookline six, Cambridge one. It'll be the 9-1-2 hitters coming up for Cambridge, Carter, Thomas, and Henke. So a very interesting juncture for Hoffman as this will be his second time through the order, second time that these hitters will have a chance to face him. He's got a comfortable lead to work with as of now, 6-1. to one. The Brookline advantage is they put two more runs on the board. As Sawada scores on a wild pitch and Melton takes the lead, uh, the team lead in RBI this season as he drives in his second RBI today and his eighth of the season so far. So Hom and Melton with two RBI each. Sawada and Siegel with two runs scored each. As Brookline has been hitting the ball really well today. Leading off here on the top of the third, the center fielder, number eight, Henry Carter. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. And again, Carter out in front of that one. We've seen a number of pitches where the Cambridge hitters have been way out in front of Hoffman's off-speed balls. That one comes in high for ball one. Swing and a miss there, strike two.
That one just missed outside, ball two. And again, way out in front of that pitch as he swings and misses for strike three. One down to start the inning. Now we cycle back to the top of the order with the pitcher, number 15, Jason Thomas. Thomas takes that one low for ball one. Thomas will already face more pitches this at bat than last one as he fouls that one off for strike one. Thomas grounded out to short on the first pitch he saw his last time up. Now staring down a 1-1 count with one out here in the third. That one skips in the dirt, ball two. This one's a chopper over to third, fielded by Bollinger, thrown to first, and that will be out number two. Two down to start the third inning. Now up the right fielder, number 18, Oliver Henke. Hanky made a nice catch out in right field on the sack fly by Melton last inning. First pitch is taken for strike one. Last time up at the plate, Hanky flew out to left. That one skips in the dirt, ball one. I feel like... The volume of my, yep, that starting to go. Uh oh. Uh, all right. Oops. Apologies, folks. Mike is acting up a bit. As that one is going to miss for. Just got to mess around with this a bit. Seems like I've got it. Two and one, the count to Hanky. That one comes in low for ball three. Three and one the count. Three and one the count to Hanky. And that's going to skip in the dirt for ball four. So Hanky takes the free pass to first. First free pass issued by Hoffman so far today. Now batting the shortstop number two, Jaden Ballou. First pitch in over his head for ball one. Runners taking off for second pitch is high. Throw down to second. Couldn't get his glove on the tag or couldn't hold on to the ball when trying to make a what would have been a difficult tag there. And Hanky snags second. Two and oh, the count to Baloo. As that one is high as well for ball three. And that's going to be a low ball four. So back to back, two out walks issued by Hoffman. As the infielders coming in for a meeting to try and settle him down, get him back into the strike zone. As it'll be runners at first and second with still two out. 
with the left fielder number 10, Che Santos, coming to the plate. Santos, his last time up, popped out shallow left center. Attempted pick off at second, but the runner gets back. You know, it really shows how impressive the pickoff move by Engelman at second is as he's picked off four runners at second base. He's got such a smooth turnaround for those throws. This pitch comes low and inside for ball one. This one's high. They're going for a pickoff at second, and they got him! This time it's Melton getting the pickoff throw down to second as Brookline ends the inning there. So that ends the top of the third. <sighs> My goodness, I think I think this might be an atmospheric thing because because of how overcast it is. You know, I think it might be causing like some you know some uh, minor static in the air that's throwing off the connection for my mic. I'm not entirely sure. I am slightly talking out of my butt when I say that, but regardless of what's causing it, you know, we're going to try our best to keep this going as Brookline prepares to come up for the bottom of the third inning. It'll be... The seven, eight, nine hitters, Rosenblatt, Mazzara, and Hart do up. First leading off for Brookline, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. He takes ball one. Rosenblatt went down on strikes his last time up. Hits a grounder up the first baseline, fielded by Brennan easily for out number one. Quick first out here in the bottom of the third, now batting the designated hitter, number 23, Jonathan Mazzara. Mazzara also went down on strikes his last time up. Hits a high bouncer over to third. Fielded, thrown to first, and it's a quick two outs here in the bottom of the third. Now batting the left fielder, number 11, Nico Hart. Hart his last time up. He grounded out to first to lead off the second inning as he takes strike one. This pitch he connects with over the outstretched glove of the shortstop, and it's a two out single for Nico Hart. Now batting, the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. First pitch, and that one gets away from the catcher as Hart takes second.
So Wada one for one so far today with a single, a hit by pitch, and two runs scored. As that one was outside for ball two. That one is low for ball three. And Sawada takes a four-pitch walk. And now two on with two out. As up comes the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. First pitch catches the high corner, strike one. Siegel one for two so far today with a single, a reach on error, and two runs scored. Chases that one, strike two. 0-2 oh the count, runners at first and second, two down here in the bottom of the third. Runners taking off as Siegel fouls it off. Count remains 0-2. Oh and Thomas uh, looking for a new ball, looks like. Thomas trying to get out of the inning without a score for the first time today. Brookline trying to continue to add to their lead. That one misses just inside, ball one. Runners taking off, Siegel lifts this one out to right. Diving catch could not be made by Hanky Hart coming in to score. Sawada racing in, Sawada's not gonna make it as he is tagged out at home. Sawada got a little greedy on the hit and run that time, but Siegel does drive in one with the RBI single to right. And we end the third inning with Brookline leading 7-1. to one. <sighs> Do up in the top of the fourth for Cambridge will be Santos, Rojas, Cruz, and Milner. Santos, of course, was up when Brookline got the pickoff move at second. That ended the top of the third inning. And Milner, of course, got the uh, got the two-out double and later scored Cambridge's first run back in the second inning. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, seems like the audio is back to being pretty smooth so far, so hopefully it stays that way. Technology is something else, folks, and I think... We've got a substitution out in left field. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to need to take a closer look, but I think we might have number 12, Wally Lawrence, out in left field in place of Hart. I'm not sure. But if a ball gets sent that way, I'll be sure to confirm. In the meantime, leading off...
First pitch to Santos. Mitch misses high and in for ball one. Second pitch misses high, ball two. There's some action in the Cambridge bullpen. They've got Hanky warming up as a potential reliever for Thomas. Two and one, the count to Santos as he fouls that one off, strike two. And it looks like we got a, uh, a timeout. It looks like some, it looks like something might have gotten in Santos's eye, maybe. Maybe like a speck of dirt blew in to his eye. Seems to be okay. Steps back into the box to face the 2-2 pitch. And that one skips in the dirt for ball three. That one catches the zone for strike three. Hoffman gets the first out of the inning on strikes. Just his third K of the day so far. Now up the catcher, Joel Rojas Cruz hits one that bounces past the third baseman, out to left field, deep into the corner, tracked down. And thrown back in as Rojas Cruz trots down to second with a one-out double. So one out and a runner at second now. As Rojas Cruz took the first pitch he saw down the left field line for a one-out double. And now up is the other batter who's gotten uh, a double against Hoffman previously. And that is the second baseman, number one, Kosi Milner. That one comes in low, ball one. That one inside, ball two. This one fouled off, strike one. Two and one, the count to Milner, one down, runner at second. That one just low, ball three. Pickoff attempt at second, and Rojas Cruz moves back.
This one lifted high to the outfield into right center. Brendel is under it. He's got the catch and holds the runner at second for out number two. Now batting the third baseman, number 12, Stefan Alexandrov. First pitch inside, ball one. Alexandrov, his last time up, got a two-out RBI single to left. That drove in Milner from second. Now up with Rojas Cruz at second and two down once again as he takes strike one there. This one lined out to left center. It's going to drop in. Siegel takes it off one hop, rifles it back in into the infield to hold the runner at third. And that will put runners at the corners now with two down. Now coming up, the first baseman, number three, Pat Brennan. First pitch is high for ball one. Brennan, his last time up, struck out to end the second inning. Alexandrov takes off for second. They throw down to second, well backed up by Sawada to hold Rojas Cruz at third. But it is a successful steal for Alexandrov, puts runners at second and third. That one in there for strike one. Two and one, the count to Brennan, runners at second and third with two down here on the top of the fourth, Brookline leading Cambridge seven to one. Chases that one low, strike two, and was way out in front of it again. Again, we see those magic off-speed pitches that Hoffman's been bringing all day today. Two and two now the count. Get some swinging, strike three. Looks like he might have fooled him with a bit of a breaking ball there. As that ends the top of the fourth. Our score as we move to the bottom half, still 7-1 to one Brookline leads. As we will have a pitching change for Cambridge. And it will be number 18, Oliver Henke, taking over for Thomas. And now at this break between innings, I'd like to take a moment to direct your attention to a helpful link in the description section of this video. At the top uh, of the description section, you can find a link where you can uh, donate money uh, to the At Bat for Brookline Booster Club to help support the Brookline High Baseball Program. So once again, you can check that out in the description section down below. So it's a simple one-for-one one substitution. Hanky comes in from right field, takes over on the mound for Thomas, and Thomas takes Hanky's old spot out and right. Thomas lasted three innings, gave up seven runs. I believe three of them were earned, as I don't think... And, I mean, it might be a bit of a judgment call, but I don't think any of the four runs he gave up in the first inning will technically go, to, go down as earned uh, due to the uh, two 
fielding errors in that inning. That said, if Cambridge does not come back and at least tie the game, Thomas will be on the hook for the pitching loss. And Hoffman, having now completed four innings of work as the starter, is now eligible for the pitching win. So due up for Brookline in this inning will be the three, four, five hitters, Brendel, Hom, and Melton. So the first batter to face Hanky will be the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. First pitch curves in, strike one. It'll be interesting to see how Brookline handles this new pitcher, who first of all is a southpaw, so already drastically different from Thomas, as that one hits the zone as well for strike two. Brendel, his last time up, drew a walk. Before that, reached on an E4 and scored, so 0 for 1 with a run. Chases that one low, but it bounces in the dirt. Brendel's off and running the throw is picked up by Brennan off the hop. And so Brendel is down on strikes. Made it a bit of a play as the pitch skipped in. But you can already tell how different Hankey's pitches are from Thomas from just how off Brendel looked in that at bat. Be interesting to see how the rest of the lineup fares as that first pitch to Hom catches the low corner. Some very deep curves on the pitches from Hanke. As that one skips in the dirt for ball one. Hom so far today, one for one with a, uh, a walk and a two run single. As he hits a dribbler foul up the third base line. One and two, the count to Hom. And that one's going to come in high for ball two. That one misses just outside, ball three. Full count to Felix Hom. And Hom with a delayed swing lifts it out to right, and it drops in foul territory. Wind might have helped not only pull that one foul, but pull it out of the reach of the pursuing fielders, Milner and Thomas. And so Hom stays alive with a full count. And Hom lifts it high into shallow right once again. Thomas under it for out number two.
two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Now batting the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton 0 for 1 so far today with two RBI. He had an RBI ground out in the first and then a sack fly in the second. As that one misses outside, ball one. That one's going to be high for ball two. That one hits the zone, strike one. Two and one, the count to Melton with two down and the base is empty here in the bottom of the fourth. Delayed swing, hits a dribbler foul up the third base side, two and two. And that one is going to bounce in the dirt. Oh, that was actually ball four. So I lost track of the balls and strikes there. As Melton draws a walk. And now we will see our first courtesy runner of the day as running for the catcher, Melton will be number eight, Ben Doctoroff. Now batting the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger. And he slices it foul. And just out of reach for the fielders, and that will be a simple strike one. Bollinger, one for two so far today. With an RBI single and a pop out to second. Delayed swing there, hits a grounder deep to short. Long throw to first is in time for out number three. Well handled by Jaden Ballou at short. As when a grounder pulls you that uh, that far back towards left field, you know I've said it before. There's no such thing as a as a gimme play at this level of baseball. At the end of four, our score: the Brookline High Warriors seven, the Cambridge Ringe and Latin Falcons one. And during this time between the fourth and fifth inning, I'd like to take a moment for a local charity spotlight. I'd like to tell you about the Brookline Food Pantry. The Brookline Food Pantry provides groceries to Brookline residents in need of food assistance. The pantry saw a huge increase in demand for food assistance at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that number has remained steadily high ever since. The food pantry has been serving an average of 650 households each week, more than four times the rate of family served pre-COVID. Brookline Food Pantry is fighting the good fight against hunger in our community, and they are always looking for more people willing to lend a hand, whether through monetary donations, direct food donations, or volunteers in the pantry. Food donations can be made at United Parish at 210 Harvard Street in Brookline on Wednesdays and Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Monetary donations can be made online at the Food Pantry's website, brooklinefoodpantry.org. Go online or call 617-800-5339 for more information about how you can help the Brookline Food Pantry to feed your community. Once again, that's brooklinefoodpantry.org or call 617-800-5339. And you can find that link and phone number 
down in the description section down below. Now leading off for Cambridge in the top of the fifth, the center fielder, number eight, Henry Carter. This one fouled at the first base side, strike two. And that one is in there, strike three. Hoffman off to a good start with a three-pitch strikeout here in the fifth. Now batting the right fielder, number 15, Jason Thomas. First pitch, he rips it foul up the third base side, strike one. Thomas 0 for 2 so far today with a pair of infield ground outs, one to short, one to third. That one low, ball one. That one low, ball two. This one is lifted out to left, left fielder on his horse, and it drops in fair for a single. A one out single for Jason Thomas. Now batting the pitcher, number 18, Oliver Henke. First pitch comes in low, ball one. Hanky so far 0 for 1 today with a walk. And this one is blocked by Melton, but Thomas still takes off anyway and reaches second on the wild pitch. This one's a grounder over to first. It bounces off of Rosenblatt's body, and Hanke is going to reach on the E3. One of those plays where the fundamentals kind of backfire. As you saw, Sawada was moving behind Rosenblatt to try and back him up if it skipped past him, but instead it skipped sideways off of him, and it actually, as a result, skipped away from Sawada and right to where he would have originally would have been. And that one hits him. Jaden Ballou gets hit by the pitch and loads the bases here with one out. And so the Brookline coach out to talk to his starter. He's got a uh, six-run cushion to work with, but that cushion could evaporate very fast if this turns into a rally for the Falcons as they've got the bases loaded with one out and their cleanup hitter, Chase Santos, coming to the plate. Brookline's going to stick with their starter. Now batting the left fielder, number 10, Che Santos. First pitch, he slices it foul. 
And that's off the tree and out of play, strike one. Santos, his last time up, went down on strikes. And before that, flew out to center. 0 for 2 so far today. That one misses high and away, ball one. That one misses low, ball two. Brookline's got just one infielder pulled on in on the grass, and that is first baseman Adam Rosenblatt. In fact, they got their middle infielders deep as this one is fouled off for strike two. An understandable strategy is even though uh, there's the threat of a run scoring, if they can turn a double play on a grounder to the middle of the infield, that would end the inning with no score. Two and two, the count to Santos. And a timeout called. Ballou at first, Hanky at second, Thomas at third. That one misses low, ball three. So a full count with the bases loaded to Che Santos. And that's going to be low for ball four and a bases loaded walk. Thomas trots home as Santos gets the RBI walk. Now batting, the catcher, number five, Joel Rojas Cruz. First pitch, and he chops it high. That one's going to fly out of play for strike one. Seven to two, now the score. After the base is loaded walk, base is still loaded with one out. That one way high for ball one. Rojas Cruz, his last time up, got a double down the left field line. Was left stranded on the bases. But with the bases loaded, a big chance here. Is this one also way high for ball two? Hoffman starting to struggle a bit with his control. Two and one, the count to Rojas Cruz. That one misses high ball three. And now the catcher, Avery Melton, coming out to talk to his pitcher. And he calls for a full meeting of the infield. Just to try and settle Hoffman down, get him back to finding the strike zone. As he's on the verge of allowing a second straight bases loaded walk. Pickoff move at second and almost got away from Sawada. And Hanky at second gets back. And that misses for ball four. A second consecutive bases loaded walk brings in run number three for the Falcons. 
And this might be the end of the day for Hoffman. And indeed it will be. So Hoffman finishes the day having pitched four and a third. Having given up three runs, two of them earned as Hanky obviously reached on an E3. And the reliever taking over for Hoffman will be number 10, Ben Cody. Cody has made two relief appearances so far this season. This one marks his third. He's pitched three innings over those two previous appearances. He has an ERA of 2.33, a whip of 3.00, and one strikeout. Cody, I believe, once came on in relief of Hoffman himself, Midway through that Waltham game, that one was a tough one for him as well as he gave up five runs. Only one of them earned, though, so his ERA was not ballooned by that outing. Might be remembering that wrong, though. So Cody takes charge on the mound, and the first batter he will face will be the second baseman, number one, Kosi Milner. And of course, the three runners on base, all credited to Hoffman as Cody inherits them from the starter. First pitch comes in way high for ball one. Cody's got to make sure to settle in and find the zone. Doesn't want to keep up the problems that Hoffman had with bases loaded walks. That one almost curved in, but not quite ball two. Milner one for two so far today with a double, a run scored, and a flyout. That one high for ball three. And this might turn into a third straight bases loaded walk. as Cody is having a little trouble finding the zone. That one misses. It is a four-pitch walk to start for Cody as it is a third consecutive bases-loaded walk for Cambridge. This is the tough thing about coming on in relief is... Sometimes you come in in a dangerous situation. You don't have time to find your form before you start giving up runs. Now batting the third baseman, number 12, Stefan Alexandrov. And that one finds the zone for strike one. But now, with this being a three-run ball game, and the base is loaded. The tying run is at first for the Falcons. Brief timeout called by Melton. Alexandrov 
two for two so far today with two singles, a steal, and an RBI. That one's going to come in high for ball one. This one sliced foul for strike two. One and two now the count to Alexandrov. And this one hit in the field, taken by Hom, flipped second for one, onto first in time, and Brookline ends the inning on a 6-4-3 double play. And after an inning full of free passes, once the fielders finally got a chance to make something happen, they absolutely did. But Cambridge, with a rally of walks, Cuts the Brookline lead in half. Going into the bottom of the set, uh, bottom of the fifth inning here at Warren Field, the score: Brookline seven, Cambridge Ringe and Latin four. And it looks like we are going to have another pitching change for the Falcons. Taking over for Henke will be number 20, Jordel San uh, Sanchez. And it looks like in the meantime, Henke is going to move to first base in place of Pat Brennan. So Sanchez will be the one facing the seven, eight, nine hitters for Brookline. Rosenblatt, Mazzara, and I think Hart. Not sure. At one point I thought I saw number 12, Wally Lawrence, out there in left field, but very hard to tell from over here on the on the right field side. Yeah, I think that is number 12, Wally Lawrence.
So leading off for Brookline here in the bottom of the fifth is the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. First pitch from Sanchez inside, ball one. Rosenblatt, his last time up, grounded out to first to start the third inning. Before that, went down on strike, so 0 for 2 so far as he takes a low ball, two. Rojas Cruz comes out to talk with Sanchez. You know, again, like I said with Cody, it can be so tough coming in as a reliever, especially here at the high school level where there aren't, you know, relief pitching specialists. You know, and, it, 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 and just being a relief pitcher in general, so tough because there's, there's no time to find your rhythm. That one does hit the zone, and it's now a 3-1 and one count to Rosenblatt. That one's going to miss inside, and Rosenblatt is going to get a leadoff walk. Now batting the designated hitter, number 23, Jonathan Mazzara. Mazzara also 0 for 2 so far today with a strikeout and a ground out. First pitch hits the zone, strike one. It's a hard grounder, and that's going to be through the left. No, it's not through the left gap, but the throw couldn't get there, and Rosenblatt going to take off for third on the throwing error. Boy, that is, that is tough because that was such a great play at short, and yet it ended up backfiring on the erroneous throw. So now batting the left fielder, number 12, as Mazzara takes second on the wild pitch there. Before I could even finish, like I was saying, now batting the left fielder, number 12, Wally Lawrence. as it takes high ball two. Lawrence with uh, getting just his third plate appearance of the season so far. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. Now up with runners at second and third. As that one well blocked by Rojas Cruz, but it will be ball three. That one in there, strike one. And that's going to be high ball four, and the bases are loaded for the Warriors as they cycle around to the top of the order. Now batting the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. Sawada has already scored two runs of his own so far today. 
And now he skies this one into shallow right. Second baseman Milner under it for out number one. So a one pitch out there, but the base is still loaded. Now up the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. And he gets hit! <laughs> Add another notch to the belt for Harrison Siegel. His seventh hit-by-pitch of the season, this time of the bases loaded variety as he brings in Rosenblatt. And Brookline now goes up 8-4. to four. Elias Brendel fouls that one off and out of play. That one in the zone, strike two. So funny. I, I could hear players from the Brookline dugout laughing when Siegel got hit by that pitch because it is absolutely wild how often he gets plunked. That's going to be a high ball one. Brendel, his last time up, he went down on strikes. as that's going to be a high and outside ball, too. Brendel 0 for 2 so far today with a walk, a strikeout, a reach on error, and a run scored. Now facing a 2-2 count with the bases loaded and one down as he takes high ball 3. Mazzara at third, Lawrence at second, Siegel at first. And it's ball four. Siegel battles his way back to a bases loaded walk as Mazzara comes in with Brookline's ninth run. Cambridge starting to have some of the same problems that Brookline had in the top half of the inning, issuing consecutive free passes with the bases loaded. And now a meeting at the mound. As Sanchez gets ready to face the next Brookline hitter, the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. Hom one for two so far today with a single, a walk, and a flyout. Big swing and a miss there, strike one. That one misses outside, ball one. That one hits the zone, strike two. Slice that one foul and out of play. Hum stays alive with a one, two count. Lawrence at third, Siegel at second, Brendel at first. One down here in the bottom of the fifth. And that one's going to miss outside, ball two. And that's going to be a low ball three. So Hom has battled his way back to a full count. 
just as Brendel did last time, uh, or Brendel did as the previous batter. And that misses. It's another bases loaded walk. Both teams in the same inning issue three straight bases loaded free passes. Lawrence trots home, and that's going to be the end of the day for Sanchez. A new reliever coming in for the Falcons, number 14, Theo Mason. So boy, what a what a tough inning this fifth inning has been for the pitchers of both teams. We saw Hoffman and Cody struggle with it in the top half of the inning for Brookline. And then Sanchez has struggled here in the bottom half and Mason losing his balance on his first attempted warm up pitch. It's just been a rough inning for pitchers. Got another note in the live chat from Barbara Jo Metzger. Go Brookline Warriors from Buffalo, New York. Happy to see you tuning in, Barbara. Hope you're enjoying the game. So 10 to 4, now the score in favor of Brookline. As both teams with three runs coming in here in the fifth off of bases loaded free passes. Warm-up throws almost done. Once he's done, he will be facing the Brookline catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton so far 0 for 1 today with a walk, a sack fly, and an RBI ground out. So 0 for 1 with two RBI so far today. And now he steps into the box with the bases loaded and one out. That hit him. Oh my goodness. First pitch from Mason and it's another bases loaded free pass as it's a hit by pitch for Avery Melton and Harrison Siegel, who got a bases loaded hit by pitch, comes all the way around to score without a single ball being put in play. Incredible. Now batting is the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger, as he took strike one there. I think they said he went around on that one. So that's an 0-2 count to Bollinger. That one inside, ball one. Bollinger. 
so far today. One for three with an RBI single. And he gets a piece of it, hits a dribbler up the third base side, picked up, thrown to first. Bollinger out at second, but a run will come in as Brendel scores on the RBI ground out. So two down, and Brookline makes it 12 to four, which is very important as we cycle around to the same batter who started this inning, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. Important to note, as that one misses for ball one, is that we are in the fifth inning, and Brookline is now up by eight. If Brookline drives in two more runs they will end this game via the mercy rule. And right now they have two runners in scoring position as Rosenblatt takes a low ball too. So if Hom and Melton both score, the game will just end right there. That one hits the zone, strike one. Big swing and a miss there, strike two. That one misses to the outside, ball three. So a full count to Rosenblatt with two outs and runners at second and third. And he hits one out to center field, and the catch could not be made, and that will be your ball game as two runs come in. Or will it? I think I think that's it. I think that's I think that's ten. I'm pretty sure that's ten. That's yep. That is it. That is your ball game, Adam Rosenblatt, with the two runs single to center. Makes it a 10-run game, and Brookline wins on the mercy rule. Hom and Melton both come in to score. And that will do it. The final score in five innings, the Brookline High Warriors 14, the Cambridge Ridge and Latin Falcons 4. Brookline secures their seventh straight win and improves to 8-1 and one on the year. They go a perfect 3-0 and oh during their spring break slate. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in today. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Before we uh, recap today's action, I'd like to just take a moment again to say if you enjoyed today's live stream, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming live streams. This is uh, the end of uh, the games for Brookline this week. But Brookline High Baseball and a number of other Brookline High teams will be back in action next week as the uh, students all return from spring break. Be sure to stay tuned for all of that. Subscribing to the channel can help. Thank you to all those who brought the good vibes in the live chat today. Remember, if you would like to say anything after the live stream is concluded, you can say it in the comments section down below. And uh, remember to check out the description section down below. You can find some helpful links, a link to uh, to where you can... Uh, donate money to the At Bat for Brookline Booster Club if you would like to support the Brookline High Baseball Program financially. 
a link and phone number for our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Food Pantry, and also some helpful links uh, relating to me uh, that you can also find in the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, my personal website, jessiesports.com, where you can find out more about me, the freelance sports broadcasting services that I provide to various teams, and how you can commission those services for your favorite team. Also, if you want to skip past all that, you can simply email me directly with any questions or requests you may have. And then remember to follow me on Instagram where I post highlights from previous live streams and also post the links to upcoming live streams. But this game has reached its conclusion. Let's recap the action real quick. In the top of the first... Cambridge went down in order. In the bottom of the first, Brookline got things going. A single and two fielding errors loaded the bases with nobody out. And then Felix Hom got the scoring started with a two-run single. Avery Melton followed up with an RBI ground out. And then Hugh Bollinger got an RBI single of his own to give Brookline a 4-0 lead at the end of one. Top of the second, Cambridge answered back with their first run off a two-out double from Kosi Milner and a... An uh, off a two-out double from Kosi Milner and an RBI single from Stefan Alexandrov, making it 4-1. to one. But then Brookline kept the scoring going in the bottom half of the second as Keenan Sawada, Harrison Siegel, and Elias Brendel loaded the bases uh, with a hit-by-pitch, a single, and a walk. And then Sawada scored on a wild pitch to make it 5-1. And then after Felix Hom reloaded the bases with a walk. It was Avery Melton with a sack fly to right to make it 6-1 at the end of two. Top of the third, uh, Cambridge got two runners on with two outs, but the lead runner was picked off at second off a nice throw from Melton from behind the plate. Brookline was able to add one more run in the bottom of the third uh, off a two-out rally that was started with a single from Nico Hart, then a walk from Keenan Sawada, and then an RBI single from Harrison Siegel, although Sawada got thrown out at home, and that ended the inning. Brookline made it 7-1. to one. Top of the fourth. Um, top of the... Uh, top of the fourth... Uh, the, uh, Cambridge got two runners on, but could not bring them home as they were left stranded at second and third. Bottom of the fourth, Brookline uh, was shut out for the first and only uh, time by uh, relief pitcher Oliver Henke. Top of the fifth, and Brookline's pitcher started to run into some trouble after a single by Jason Thomas and a reach on an E3 by Hanke and a hit-by-pitch from Jaden Ballou to load the bases. Three consecutive bases loaded walks issued to Chase Santos, Joel Rojas, Cruz, and Kosi Milner made it a 7-4 ball game before a 6-4-3 double play ended the inning there. And then in the bottom half, it was, the Brookli it was Brookline's turn to take advantage of some pitching woes. First, a leadoff walk from Adam Rosenblatt. Then Jonathan Mazzara reached on what I would classify as an infield uh, single. It was really close, but either way, then a walk from Wally Lawrence loaded the bases. And then two batters later, things got started. First, a base loaded hit by pitch by Harrison Siegel. Then back-to-back, -back, bases loaded walks from Elias Brendel and Felix Hom, then another bases loaded hit by pitch by Avery Melton, then an RBI ground out from Hugh Bollinger, and then a two run single to center by Adam Rosenblatt finished the seven run inning as Brookline triggered the mercy rule with the 10 run lead. So that will do it from Warren Field in Brookline, Massachusetts. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.